There are a few questions that more people get upset, offended, angry about today than the topic of homosexuality. It's clearly a hot topic in our culture. For a long time, I avoided addressing this issue. No matter what people say, somebody gets upset, somebody gets offended, relationships get broken. I'm a high school teacher. Many students come to me hurting to talk about their same-sex attraction. And the last thing I want to do is respond in a way that's not loving. Our culture says that Christians are anti-gay. Our culture says that God hates gays. Let me tell you something, it's not true. I just want to say I'm sorry. That's not right when Christians tell anti-gay jokes and they make remarks against gay people. That is insulting somebody made in the image of God. God loves gay people and he loves every single one of us. Really the big question is, has God spoken for the issue of sex? If not, we get to decide for ourselves. But if God has spoken, then there's a way that we in fact are supposed to live. From the very beginning in the book of Genesis, God has a certain design and a pattern for us. Instantly, some people are thinking, oh, here we go, God's a cosmic killjoy, he's got rules, he's got commandments, he's trying to control how we live. And I used to think that way for a long time. God gives us certain commands and rules for our good. So we look at the beginning in Genesis. In the very first chapter, it says that God made male and female, and they were both made in his image. Then you skip forward to chapter two. The man will leave his father and his mother, join to his wife, cling to his wife, and the two shall become one. So right away, there's this pattern that God's creation involves male and female, and then he set up a sexual relationship to be between one man and one woman in a committed monogamous, permanent relationship for life. And one of my friends pushed back and he said, well, wait a minute, Genesis is just describing what happened, but it's not setting up a pattern for how we're necessarily supposed to live. People often say, if you have a problem with homosexuality, you're hateful, bigoted, homophobic, and intolerant. But few people think that about Jesus. The Jesus card still brings a view of compassion and mercy in our culture. Well, what's interesting is Jesus spoke about the subject. Jesus had a particular view about the context for sex. Some religious leaders come to Jesus and they're asking him a question about divorce. And they say, what happened? You know, can a man divorce his wife? Now he wasn't asked about homosexuality and the reason was because this wasn't an issue even on the table. It was understood that marriage was between one man and one woman and then sex was confined to that relationship. Jesus says, let me remind you back at the beginning. God made them male and he made them female in his image and the two shall become one. And he says, what God has brought together let not man separate. We see it repeated in the book of Leviticus, chapter 18 and chapter 20, Romans chapter 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. From the beginning of Genesis all the way to the end, God's pattern for sexuality is to be between one man and one woman in a committed, monogamous relationship for life. We live in a culture that wants to define us by our sexuality. Straight or gay or whatever definition we use, it's as if our sexual nature is our truest being. God defines us differently. God sees us as his children, as valuable individuals made in his image. It's only when we submit all of our lives, including our sexuality to God, that we experience his best and we experience true freedom.